The show garnered a huge following right from the beginning because of your chemistry with Nicole and the relationship between those two characters yeah. and for the diversity of the show's cast. So yeah. um, as a you know, well-off English man f from England going to the States, what have you learned about um, the racial dynamics of Hollywood and media? Um. It's very interesting, and as you said, having a very diverse cast. When we started it, it was not only Nicole, there was Orlando and uh, John Cho. Um, and none of the characters were, were, were written, with the exception of, of Ichabod and Katrina, because of their period context. None of the rest were, were written with any um, ethnicity in mind. It was purely they wanted to find the best actors for each of the parts. Which I think is such a, a beautiful, perfect way of casting anything. Um, I, t I think it's it's terrible when you see uh, this is this is the white actor, this is the black actor, this is the Mexican actor. It's not the right way to go about things. Um, I, d I did notice instantly in in America, particularly when you have a, a woman of colour in the lead role, it's not just a woman of colour in the lead role it immediately means so much more than that across the whole of America. It's someone who, there's a woman of color in a position that not very long ago, she wouldn't have been. And it comes to symbolize so much more. And so then when something like this happens, when they kill off said character, uh, of course it's going, to, it's going to mean an awful lot more consequently. Um, it's something that I don't think I haven't really noticed as much over here. Strangely, there are there are still lots of discussions over here about um, about uh, more opportunities for for ethnic actors over here. Uh, but but even so, the, the the response to Abby's death over there it, it was a huge thing. I saw that there was even an it, it got so far as there was an article in the Washington Post about it because Abby Mills represented more than just another character in the show. And I thought it, was a, it, it, it wasn't an easy, easy decision for them to make. I know that. I know the, the writers, uh, you know, they, they, they like writing Abby Mills. And I like acting with Nicole. Um, but it was a decision that had to be made. And I don't know the, the machinations of, of the politics behind it. But there you go. I've, I've gone on. <laughs> uh, speaking of, you know, Abby's death, yeah. In many ways, the character was kind of a safety net for Ikea. You know, she took care of taking all the modern care of all the modern conveniences and translating everything to him. Yes. How do you think Ikea will deal with you know, not having that anymore? Well, that'll be the curious thing to find out. I I always thought that I always thought of Ikea as the sidekick. Um, Abby has to be the you know she's the the one that we, the audience can relate to. So when you're entering into this this insane world of Sleepy Hollow, you go with Abby. She's been the guide. And Ichabod is this curious man in, in the periphery. Um, which also, I, I loved playing that. I think that was, you know, it gave lots of opportunities to explore the character. Um, I, I never really, funnily enough, was interested in Ichabod's backstory when we started the first season. I thought, this, the less you know about him, probably the better. And that's how he can get away with all of his, um, his uh, quirk, quirk, quirks, quite. And Abby is the constant smooth guide through that. Um, that then, that changed a lot in, in season two, when they then did start to explore uh, Ichabod's backstory and, and family and things. And so it'll be interesting to see where they go without that crutch, because I still think that Abby was, was grounding that as well. Um, so no, it'll be very curious to see whether they decide to find another way to ground Ichabod in, in reality, or whether they think that he has, um, uh, it, it, he's a, an, an inhabitant of the modern era enough that he can do it on his own. I don't know what they're planning, uh, but I don't envy them having to make that decision. <laughs> uh, how did you end up uh, performing Pride Mary on uh, Lock Hospital for the show? And can you tell us a bit about that? Oh, process? yes. Um, a theatre company that I've been involved with for a long time called uh, Simple Eight 
We were devising a show that they put out, I couldn't be a part of it, sadly, because of filming, um, a stage adaptation of Moby Dick that was on last year or the year before for the Arcola. And in the research and development period, we were exploring lots of sea shanties. And I became a little obsessed with sea shanties. I think they're remarkable. And so I had this huge um, uh, uh, um, compendium of um, sea shanties and, and uh, songs from that era. And that was a real favourite of mine. This brilliant, beautiful, haunting ballad and then you find out it's about a man who caught syphilis off a prostitute. Uh, and I thought that would be a fun thing to have Ichabod sing at karaoke. Why not? I like, I like imagining him on the journey over, the three-month boat journey over, yeah. with lots of big, um, uh, big men with rickets and scurvy singing <laughs> songs about prostitutes and Ichabod being very proper. <laughs> So can you remember the exact moment you decided you wanted to act? Oh, jeez. I've, I've been doing it a lot um, when I was a, a lad. My, uh, I was encouraged to go into amateur dramatics. Uh, it kept me off the streets, I suppose. And then at one point during a performance, an actor came to watch and said afterwards, you know you can get paid for this. I was like, shut <laughs> up, don't be ridiculous. Uh, and it turns out he was, he was telling the truth. And that's when I first thought, so I must have been about 14. It was a production of Cider with Rosie, the Laurie Lee book. Um, I can't remember who adapted it. And I was playing the young Laurie Lee. And my dad was in it, playing the old Laurie Lee. <laughs> to amateur dramatics, it's like that. Um, and, and yeah, then I suddenly thought, wow, if I can do this, then... Amazing. And I uh, also watching um, Gene Wilder films when I was younger, I thought, that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. I want to be Gene Wilder. <laughs> and then I started watching Alec Guinness films. I'm like, I want to be Alec Guinness. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. Uh, probably that moment. Okay. So I was Thank about you. 14. So, fans of Nicole, we've talked about this before, but the camera's on this time, so I don't have to <laughs> secondhand share it with the fans. So, fans of the It Could Be relationship would love to see you and Nicole work together again in oh, yeah. the future. So, do you have any dream projects that you would like to collaborate with her on in the future, or perhaps theatre? I'd love to do a play with Nicole. I'd really like that. I'd like to do a play with lots of people. I'd like to do a play with John Noble. We were discussing that yesterday. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, of course. I think she's. We found a, a real um, rapport, and uh, found a very good, steady working relationship. And if we can go and explore something else with that, um, yeah, I'd, I'd gladly do it. Because I had some messages, fans were wanting to know if your friendship was fractured because of Abby getting killed off the show. I said, I think you're being <laughs> a little dramatic, but <laughs> uh, it's kind of them to inquire. My relationship with Nicole has not changed because of her death. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it did. They were very concerned. Well, they can rest easy. <laughs> is, um, is filming the new series, uh, does it feel different filming the new series uh, since the departure of Nicole? Um, uh, we start, I think we start in July. The writers go uh, back uh, in June and we start in July. But yes, it will definitely feel different. The, uh, you know, there were some episodes where we weren't really together very often and just even even with that, knowing that next week I'll be filming with her again, it feels it feels different. The set feels different. Uh, so yes, it, w it will be. It will be. When did you know that Abby was going to get killed off? Was it very early on? Or no, no. I found out um, an episode or two before it, we shot it. Um, I think the decision was made only an episode or two before we shot it. Um, as I understand it, it was an idea that had. It was something, not an idea, it was something that had been discussed a little bit. Um, I don't think anyone really thought it would happen. Uh, and then the decision was made, you know, very late on, very late on. I don't know what episode that would have been that we were shooting. I can't think. I'm looking at you because you seem to be the expert <laughs> on everything, Another on everything that worries episode. me. <laughs> the monster of the week episode. That's right, it was the one with the monster. <laughs> there you go. Is it, has it been disruptive to have to recalibrate 
the style of the show and like your approach to playing the character because of the you know the first season was one type of way and then by the time it was the third season it was basically a procedural monster of the week type of show has it been like disruptive to your equilibrium of playing the character oh it's kept me on my toes <laughs> uh, no I, I wouldn't say it's been disruptive um, of course there are avenues that you get really really excited about and then there are avenues that don't excite you quite so much but you know uh, that's the same with, with every every job I do. Do you have a preference for the more serialized mythology of the show versus Monster of the Week? Um, I do, I do, I'm a fan of the serialized, mm. uh, but I'm equally a fan of uh, my, my bosses. <laughs> 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 I think they, they're, they're cleverer and know more than I do. <laughs> In terms of becoming your characters, do you just connect with them by putting on the costume, or do you find something to help with it and become actually you know, some sort of connection? At the very beginning, when I read the pilot, the thing that really struck me was how well he, he was written on the page. And there are you know, some scripts that you read, and you think, okay, well, I need to, to, I understand this about the character, I need to discover this about them, and that's how you work your way in. And then there are, th are some that just leap out at you instantly. And when I first read the pilot, he leapt out, and I heard his voice, and I saw it. It sounds very actor, you know, wanky. <laughs> but you kind of, you instantly know, this is how I'd like to, to, to do it. Um, and then, of course, you get used to the character after doing it for, for three years. It, it definitely helps putting that on. It, def it feels like a change when you come in in a, in a t-shirt and, and jeans <laughs> and then suddenly you put those on, you immediately feel different and it's a, a good way into the character. I remember um, reading uh, an interview with Ian McKellen when he was talking about Gandalf and he said that, you know, how do you approach that? It's the, he'd, he'd read the books obviously and read the scripts and it's such a, a nuanced character. Where, how do you begin? And he was really struggling with it. And then he went for a makeup test and they put on a, a false nose and he was like, oh, I don't know. And then immediately they put on the nose that they used and he said, everything fell into place. And so it varies. You know, sometimes you work from the inside out and sometimes the outside in. Luckily with this, Len Wiseman and I seem to have very, very similar ideas from the pilot. So when he was creating the look, it, it really didn't um, differ from... The, the idea that I had in my head, which is a relief. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what was it like to play a character that uh, adjusts to like, the modern time? I mean, that's always been fun. That's, uh, for me, that's always been a real highlight of the show, which is why also I think you know, having Abby as the guide and Ichabod just uh, skimming around getting used to things, that's, that's really fun. Um, now that the, the series Ichabod's been part of the modern world for such a long time, there are fewer things to... Surprise him. Surprise him. Um, it's a great shame that we had that time leap before the third season, uh, because that's the time that Ichabod first went into a, an aeroplane, and I, I would have loved to have seen that. In fact, that's an ad, ad, Alex Kurtzman, and one of the producers, and I had spoken about that before, what it would be like, Ichabod in a plane, and he said... He'd probably think going along the runway it was just a really fast bus. Yeah. And then suddenly it takes off and he freaks out and Jenny will have to knock him out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. DVD, um, that's the idea, DVD Extra. DVD Extra, there you go. We could have, uh, maybe season four will be a flashback to that missing time. It won't be. <laughs> well, <laughs> and you, when you talk a bit about your look, so you said that you cut your hair because you didn't know if the show would be coming back. And oh, so yeah. did you hear anything from the higher ups about, because there's always this big thing with Ichabod and his hair and like what his hair needs to look like. Oh yeah. Did you get a stern talking to? About no, uh, no, they haven't seen it yet. It's my mind. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I finished and I, I got a haircut and God, I hope it grows back before July. <laughs> so I have to go back into a wig then. God. <laughs> Possibly. Or there could be another time leap and another haircut mm. and another mode of transport. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for season four, is there a particular route you want your character to go down? Um, well, I know that we're. Um, it seems to have been set up that Ichabod will go and join this new organization set up by Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd really like 
particularly if it does take Ichabod to Washington, we are in, in entering into one of the weirdest times in modern American history. Uh, to have Donald Trump running for president. <laughs> That's weird. That's just weird. And um, I think if we are going to be shooting in Washington, we, we shouldn't hide from the fact that there has to be some dark underground force <laughs> that is making this surreal turn of events happen. Guest star from Donald Trump. Guest star from Trump. Yeah. That'd be perfect. From President Trump. <laughs> Sorry? He'll be the monster of the week. Monster. He'll be the monster of four years. <laughs> four years. Yeah. Yeah. Way dark. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. You mentioned Trump, and instantly the mood of the room changes. Back to the future too. It's so funny because he does kind of look like um, yeah. Biff. Biff. Yeah, yeah. Benjamin. Yeah. In his tower. In his big tower. Yeah. I thought the character was written inspired from Trump. I is I that true? That, somewhere. that is wonderful. Is it though? And that's like imitating art. <laughs> that's that's cool. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So have they yeah. told you? Have I killed it? Have I killed it? Well, we'll talk more about wardrobe. Did they tell you anything about what you're meant to be wearing this time? Because uh, it's like, how long is he going to hold on to the clothes? Um, I hope I hope that the clothes don't change. I mean, it's nice to have. It's kind of I've always thought of it as a security blanket mm -hmm. for him. It's the one. It's the last thing, especially now everyone he has ever known is dead. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the one thing he has from. But he had a moment when he wanted to change coat when. An episode there was that moment, and it? he didn't like it. <laughs> so I won't wear skinny jeans. Um, yeah, and I th Len Wiseman actually always uh, said that we can have variations on it, much like you know superheroes have variations on on their their theme. Um, but no, it's it, it, it. Len always wanted you know an iconic look where you can see a silhouette of it and you'll recognise it as. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping I'm not in a, a hoodie. Skinny jeans. <laughs> Skinny jeans. After all this time, with about three years now, what would you advise him? Would if I you advise have, him? Yeah, if you Chill would advise out. him. Chill out. Chill out. It gets very stress. It's hard for me to be frowning for such a long time. Uh, and go on holiday. I'd like to... He should go on holiday to somewhere like the Maldives and we'll go and film there for a couple of months. In the same costume. Saying. Try skinny jeans or you know tight shorts or something. Tight shorts, little yeah. speedos. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you. Thanks.